record. So it's quite possible that somewhere in some archive this photo exists or some photos exist. Okay. Let so me, but here's let, the question. If the if the government keeps coming out and telling us that you know we may begin to face threats from outside of this world if they're telling us that you know like when they're discussing these things that they behave in a way that we can't describe and no propulsion systems that we know of if they're telling us all this why wouldn't they release all that other stuff too why would when they release those photographs for what's us in it for them well what's in it for them to tell us about it in the first place well they're not but what is it, what's in it for them to people, even admit what i mean just the the, the people, way they're addressing it now people think that there was a sudden epiphany with the U.S. government that they wanted to be more transparent and they wanted the, the general public to know more about this phenomenon. Right. That is not what happened. What happened is a couple of insiders in December of, 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 of 2017 walked some evidence out of ATIP, found a loophole, and put it on the front page of the New York Times. Now oh, so they it was can't, leakers who did hell that? Hell yeah, it was leakers really? who did that. Yes, it was Christopher Mellon. Okay. I actually got a phone call when the film was coming out, and I got a phone call from Leslie Kane, and she goes, Christopher Mellon told you that he was the one that walked the footage out of the Pentagon? I said, yeah, it's on camera. Well, Christopher she goes, Mellon... He goes, she goes, I can't believe that. He didn't even want that in the New York Times. Like, how... You know, I, I said, I don't know. He just, he just said it, and that's what happened. It hmm. wasn't like suddenly the, the government had this epiphany. So now they can't put the genie back in the bottle. Now you got the David Fravers, right? David Fravers' encounter is phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's got photographic evidence. That Tic Tac. I was investigating a landing case in Socorro, New Mexico. It was, it was April 24th, 1964. So I spent five years on this case. It was the case that turned around Dr. Jalen Hynek. Mm. Dr. Jalen Hynek investigated UFO reports for the United States Air Force as a scientific advisor for, from 47 to 69. He's the one that coined all the, the term close encounter of the first kind, close encounter of the second time, the second kind, the close encounter of the third kind. Okay? Close encounter of the first kind is when you see a UFO at close range, close encounter of the second time, you see a UFO and somehow it interacts with the environment. Whether, like Richard Dreyfuss' face got burnt or it leaves marks on the ground or it burns trees or whatever. The propulsion affects something. Close encounter of the third kind, and this is coming out of Air Force Project Blue Book's own files. This is not me saying this. Close encounter of the third kind is when beans are reported by the witnesses. So beans are associated with the craft are reported. One of the best, most well-documented cases in U.S. history took place at Scor, New Mexico, April 24th, 1964, at 5 o'clock with a police officer that was on duty by the name of Lonnie Zamora. The best case in U.S. history. The best documented case. The first military officer uh, to arrive on the scene got there with the, the the bushes were still smoking. I mean, the imprints in the ground of the craft, the footprints, they got diagrams of this stuff. And I spent five years going back and forth to score New Mexico. I got to know the wife, Mary. I got to know the daughter, Diane, the son, Michael, his co-workers. I went to the National Archives with Ray Stanford. He wrote the book on it, Squirrel Saucer in a Pentagon Pantry. Phenomenal case. And what I learned was that the... Um, the Air Force, according to his own family, Lonnie Zamora's family, told his daughter this. I have this on camera. The Air Force wanted him desperately not to talk about the beans. They, do, they discouraged him to talk about the beans, and I'll tell you why. It's one thing when you see an object, unknown object, like David Fravor saw up in the sky, exhibiting a technology that seems to defy conventional propulsion. And it's another thing altogether when you've got beans on the ground. Well, the Air Force didn't want him talking about that, and that was one thing that his daughter and his wife told me clearly. And his wife said what, Lonnie was never the same after that, that case. But, so what did Lonnie see? Lonnie saw two beans at the base of, a, of an egg-shaped craft that was landed in an arroyo in Socorro, New Mexico, in broad daylight. Lonnie looked out the window of his patrol car. He saw something that caught his eye, and then this object landed. He drove, he, he was actually in hot pursuit at the time. He gave up pursuit to go investigate what was going on. And he sees this object on the, on the, on the, in the arroyo, in the desert, on the ground. It's such a well-documented case. And he rolls down his car window and he's looking out and he's going, Did, am I looking at like a, an overturned car? What the hell am I looking at? And then he sees two 
little figures. He said they were childlike at the base of the craft, and one of them locked eyes with him. And uh, his wife said he was never the same after that. But um, how did he describe them? What they he said like? they were child. They were small, childlike. It's small. And had white coveralls, tight coveralls. This is a close encounter of the third kind. What they say their faces look like? I, I he didn't give a lot of detail. I've got the only. So I went to Lonnie's house. I got to know his his wife quite well. Lonnie had passed a couple of years prior to that, and I I don't know how far down the rabbit hole you want to go in this case because we could talk on this case for three hours. But whatever, um, I could tell you that I got access to. He had this black duffel bag, and it was with his wife's permission. He had kept all the original newsprints from like the articles that had come out, and that's where I got the details. And he also talked about it in some recordings that I got from his family and other researchers. It's in the movie, The Phenomenon. And um, that's where I got the primary description, because the, it was Richard T. Holder was the first military officer on the scene. The FBI got involved later. and, and, and uh, How long was, it, was that thing sitting out there for? Uh, the object was sitting on the ground, not for very long, just a few minutes. Lonnie saw the beans... And he went, like, around to get a closer look. I mean, he was like, what the hell am I looking at? And he, he drove his car around to get a closer look, and he lost contact with for a second while he drove around to get a closer look. Now he's within 50 feet of this egg thing sitting on the ground. And he gets out of the patrol car. It starts, uh, it, it starts making some weird noise, and it has a blue flame that comes out. And he said it was, it was not like a, like a rocket flame where it would hit the ground and dust everything up, but it pierced the ground like a knife through warm butter. And um, then when it got about 20 feet off the ground, it went completely silent with no flame, no nothing. You can hear a pin drop. And there was a symbol on the side of the craft. It was in yellow, and it was about three feet tall, and it was a, like a V like this, two lines and a line on top. And um, Let's get a photo of that uh, symbol that, that he recreated. Yeah, you'll see, you'll, see, you'll see fake symbols because Richard T. Holder asked him to draw a different symbol. I actually have the original symbol um, on a document from Dr. Hyatt. Why did someone ask him to draw a fake because, symbol? Because he said that if, if anybody else claimed to see the same craft with that symbol, they would immediately be able to identify a hoaxer. Oh, so which was the real one? The real one is that one right there with the two lines in that upside down V right there. That's the real one. That's right the real one. Yeah, and I've got the document in Dr. Jalen Hynek's own handwriting. Ray Stanford and I went to the National Archives and, and found it. It was a huge find. So they did that on purpose just in case some copycat people started coming up he with He did. Richard T. Holder and I met Richard T. Holder's two kids and talked to them about it. I, met, I talked to his wife about it and they said, yeah, he was, he was told that's not the genuine. That's the one right there. Right there that you're looking at. Mm. That's the real one.